G'day guys, Tells20 here and welcome back to Marble Mountain. This is a pretty epic episode, we do a lot of work, it's one of those builds that I just couldn't stop. <laughs> I pretty much started this on Sunday morning and finished in the afternoon. I was just obsessed and love the work that I get done. We've been doing a lot of work around the swamp land and around uh, Copper Falls and all the little towns that fit around it too. It's just been a lot of fun. We built Shrek's house the other day in a live stream which was pretty good fun and in that live stream I asked you guys where I should work next and a lot of people wanted me to work on the big national park that's going to sit around this area incorporating a lot of the swamp land and the mountainside that sits around Copper Falls so I was pretty happy with that because that's exactly where I wanted to work. So that's what we're going to be doing today, a big old national park and yeah man it turns out pretty fun. We um, end up doing a live play at the end too, it's like a 10 minute or so live play and there's a bit of time lapse as well for this one so yeah strap yourselves in, it's a doozy of an episode. Um, before I do get into everything that I am doing, um, this week I released an update video for 2020. There's a link in the description if you want to go and watch it but I'll give the lowdown of it though I think you should go and watch it because I am quite happy with how it turned out. Um, but basically I am going part-time um, as a YouTuber, <laughs> that's like a funny term to put it, but uh, yeah, I am taking one day off a week and I'll be doing YouTube instead, which is very, very exciting and uh, what it means is I should be able to release extra videos a week and I'll be also doing some live streaming because my PC is now a lot faster, I've just done a big upgrade, so there'll be live streams every week, well hopefully every week or you know every second week, um, but I do aim to up my videos because um, I'll have an entire day dedicated to that. And of course one day a week is barely enough to call yourself a YouTuber, but it's just the, the fact that I'm taking a day off to actually just work on my channel, work on my own projects, it, it's just feels it's very exciting and I'm just so pumped and I'm very optimistic with the amount of work that I can get done. Um, like I said before, hoping to up my videos, hoping to do more live streams. Uh, I don't see why I wouldn't be able to do that because, you know, one day is like one pure day of dedication to recording or commentary or whatever. Yeah, so, so cool and I owe you guys a lot because um, I'm able to do that because of you, because of your support, because you watch my videos, because you like them, because you share them. So thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it, you guys are an absolute legends, I love doing this, I feel very lucky to be doing this and um, yeah, just keep it up, I'll keep it up too, <laughs> I guess, uh, but yeah, I really do appreciate it guys, you're absolute legends. So enough of all that, let's get into the episode because that's why you're here. So basically today we are building this national park but um, I, I felt like I needed to expand out Copper Falls a little bit more in order to um, really incorporate uh, the whole national park before really tackling the main bulk of it. So I figured we'll start off by doing um, a bit of the uh, farmlands that are going to sit around the, um, like a bit of the entrance to some of the areas of uh, the national park and then that way it's you know feels a bit more complete rather than just doing little sections um, at a time and um, I also wanted to make it so that it wasn't just one giant national park I wanted it to I mean it is one giant national park but um, in terms of creating that the park districts um, I decided to split it up into about I think I am end up doing about five or seven or something like that uh, but basically I do a bunch of different ones uh, mainly because I wanted there to be I wanted to see people going to particular locations I didn't want them just be driving to so-and-so national park I wanted it to go be going to the cave system or the waterfall or the riverside um, That way we get a bit more of an idea of where people are heading. We know what people are up to uh, it Feels a very big brother doesn't it? But it, I just thought it'd be a little bit funner I didn't, and I also think that we'll see more tourists going to these locations rather than if it was just one national park and it just splits it up a little bit and I think it just works in a much better um, way of doing it. Um, plus for all those people who are interested in writing stories for the wiki or people who um, you know like to come up with uh, names for areas and um, ideas for what sits there and you know, the history behind places um, whether it's in the comments section or in discord or wherever. I thought that this gives you a good opportunity to um, you know, know where, know what each area is called. 
and um, that way when we do live streams and we um, do more live plays we can get a bit of a sense of the different areas within Marble Mountain. So the first thing that I built was this road that was going down to that cave network. That cave network we built a couple of um, weeks ago but um, I just wanted to finish it up, give it its final touches, um, building a very uh, steep road that goes down to that national park and uh, yeah that whole cave system works really well because people actually go inside that cave system and um, explore the, all the ridges as well. I explained this in the live play at the end but I wanted that system to be a bit more like this um, very touristic area, probably like one of the main areas that people are visiting when they go to the national park. Um, there would be like family orientated cave tours and some very like easy, uh, you know, not quite adventurous ones, but then there would also be some like crazy um, cave adventures for people who were sort of doing their own exploring and you need know, camp up on the ridge and then you there'd be like a whole range of activities there and I guess that's why I wanted that one section to have you know its own park and that's why each area that I end up designing in this episode um, is its own park within the giant um, national park. So again just working on before, uh, sorry talking about things that I've already done but I was just working on some road layouts figuring out where the rest of the roads or the main roads are going to go in uh, the countryside of Copper Falls and now this is an area that I wanted to turn into some sort of waterfall. Uh, somebody gave me this suggestion in the live stream that I did and it um yeah, I think it's a great fit for this area. I think it's also a great way to deal with a bit of the gradients that we're dealing with because it's uh, very, it's really quite steep around here, but it, it is like a gradual steepness, but the um, the terrain difference from the top of uh, Marble Mountain and, or even where this water starts and the bottom of like the sea level, I guess, it's huge and making that transition can be a bit tricky, but it is sort of the reason why we started the series in the first place. I do love working with this sort of terrain difference. Uh, at the bottom of this, of this waterfall, we also have these rapids. So oh, actually I probably should have made a park as well down there or some sort of area of the national park that was for rapids. Uh, we might come back to that. Uh, that's another idea for another time. But um, yeah, we have this whole rapids uh, area uh, at the below, below this this waterfall it um, leads into the, like the marshland as well so you know maybe people are putting in their kayaks and um, putting in their rafts to go down on that probably a great spot for uh, maybe some sort of school excursions or school camps or something like that but this spot just here I thought some sort of grand uh, some sort of grand waterfall would be a pretty good fit um, I don't think this would be the biggest waterfall in Marble Mountain we do have another one that's on the other side of the river that's um, going on to where the, um, the seaside is. It's closer to Montana. I think that's a bit bigger and probably it's probably going to be a bit grander than this one. But this is like a nice little surprise. You might not know that this waterfall existed until driving past it. So I thought we'd have a couple of lookouts and I ended up placing down a, um, a little beach down there too with some camping. Um, don't get ahead of myself. Should talk about what I'm doing. Uh, you saw me as well. Uh, working with some of the rocks and the boulders they um they're really tricky with water because the water doesn't like the boulders very much I um I really wish that the water would run through the boulders um, or if they worked more of a prop rather than I guess I think they're a building technically but I'm not quite sure uh, but if they were a prop then we'd actually see water running through them but instead they are just clashing with the water and the water does some really weird things to maneuver around uh, these boulders though I try to sometimes use that to my favor so you can actually get some really sharp uh, sharp angles with that water um, especially when you're doing it as part of a waterfall so I tried to use it so that the water was um, you know being really sharp and going over a bit more of a cliff face because of those boulders it worked a little bit but it wasn't working exactly how I wanted it but I just ended up leaving it as it is and I think it's fine the way it, way it turned out um, we also have this road, this um, bridge that is going to be heading over into the um, the real national park, the big national park, and this will be where you take the road, um, maybe up to Mal Marble Mountain. We haven't quite gotten that far yet, but uh, it's the sort of roads that you are getting right out of the city. This is, um, you know, into real wilderness territory. We'll work on that in a little while. 
Uh, this little beach that we're working on is going to be another campsite so um, people can come down and pitch a tent down here and they might go kayaking. Uh, maybe this is an area where you go kayaking down the rapids, who knows. Uh, but yeah, it's quite a rocky area and it's unfortunate that the rocks don't match the, uh, the, the cliff textures of my map theme but, you know, it is what it is. I don't mind the textures of these rocks but they just look a bit strange compared to the uh, texture of my cliff face. But, you know, that's just a limitation that we're working with. I, I don't really mind too much. Um, and it's actually not too bad when you uh, end up placing out a whole bunch of trees next to them. So that's probably why I'm going a bit heavy with the trees. It is a very foresty area, but um, these big pine trees, they help a lot when it comes to hiding a lot of the glitchiness and a lot of the differences when it comes to the boulders and my, uh, my textures. My cliff textures, that is. And um, I also wanted, I don't know if you noticed, but I placed down a little rock, rock climbing bouldering um, area down there. I thought that was a nice little touch. Gets people down there. And there's some cool animations seeing people bouldering too. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, and again, making that into another park. And if you have any name suggestions or ideas for things that, um, you know, might be the story or history or um, different features of these sort of places, then you can always head on over to the Discord server. Uh, there's a big chat going on. I know you guys are probably sick of me talking about this, but <laughs> there is a big chat going on about the different things that I do build in each episode. And if you ever want to write or come up with any of the names, then that's a good place to start. Or just leave them in the description below, the comment section below. You guys don't have access to the description, but uh, yeah, definitely do that because I don't really name anything in this. It's mostly up to you guys. Although I did um, I end up naming this little town that I built in the last stream that I just did on Monday. Um, I called it Randy Marsh, which I thought was pretty fitting seeing as we're working with a marshland. Um, anyway, again, we're not talking about that. We are talking about what I just built and I just built a very, very small group of houses that um, sit within... They're not really in the National Park, but they're um, just on the fringes of Copper Falls. I really love this spot. They're um, some pretty rundown looking houses, but I think they're in some pretty nice looking territory. I think if I was going to live anywhere, I know I've said this a couple times, but I think this might be my newest favorite area um, to live in with that rushing water. You got the waterfall really close to the National Park and you're not too far away from the main city. So I think that would be a pretty sweet spot to live. Um, I wanted to also just expand out this area a little bit so that it wasn't so abrupt with, you know, all of a sudden we've got this forest and uh, nothing else is detailed. So I decided to place down this farm. I guess it's probably not really a farm. It's uh, more of like an apple orchid or something like that. So I decided to do that. There's a few of these and they're really easy to make. Ended up just using the prop line tool to um, drag a couple of those small bushes. They make for some really nice generic looking... Uh, I guess farm, why do I keep calling it a farm? Uh, some sort of orchid, I guess, or orchard, however you'd say it. Uh, I think they work really nicely in that sort of a way, and obviously you don't see the fruits on them, and they don't actually act as agriculture, but they um, they still look quite cool, and they fill in, they're really nice um, gap fillers, um, particularly in places where you have some very um, steep gradients, and that's exactly the location that we're working with. Those, uh, any sort of farm I don't think would work or, you know, maybe cattle would work around there, but I don't think any crops would grow very nicely on that area. So I figured that would probably be a good spot. We'll have to get some sort of banana plantation too. We'll have to do like a big area for that. Um, what I am doing now is we're working in like this deep foresty area of um, this national park. Again, calling it a national park because I don't know the name of it just yet, but uh, this national park is going to be quite foresty and it sits right on the foothill of Marble Mountain 2, the actual physical mountain of Marble Mountain. Um, something that I did notice was there was, um, it's quite, it's quite high up around here and, uh, rather than it just feeling like one giant mountain, I wanted it to be a, almost like there were like little mountains as part of Marble Mountain, which is very typical within mountain ranges, um, in real life. So I decided just to um, make a bit more of a valley and also snake a, um, a main, like a bit of a highway that goes through there too to get people around and deeper into the national park. I dare say we might build some sort of small village in here, but it's going to be really, really small. 
Ah, man, so cool. Started working with the uh, River Networks by Mac Welshman. Um, finally using them to the way that he probably intended it. Uh, these are really useful networks that can create some really awesome looking streams. Uh, I struggled for the first part, uh, main, mainly because I wasn't doing it properly. <laughs> what I needed to do is I needed to place like a small body of water at the top of this river and then that way it just trickles down into the um, actual network. Uh, and something else that I found out is I was using the very small network and trying to get a really small stream, whereas I should have been using a bit more of a mid-size network and then that way the um, stream well, the water actually goes down the like a little bit of the part of the um, network which now that I know is going to make life a lot easier down the track and it might be a bit easier for you guys as well so I hope that helps out but um basically don't if you want to make something really small don't go for the small network because um, the water end up filling that up completely whereas if you go for something around the mid range then it'll funnel into those um, into like the smallest part of that network rather than the entire the entire stream, the entire network. Um, it looks a bit weird at first, but um, I end up placing a whole bunch of trees down so that it covers up a lot of um, a lot of the stuff that doesn't look quite right. So that's my technique for everything: just cover things up with trees. All right, now I'm working on the next part of the national park, which is going to be a rock climbing cliff face. Um, I wanted this area to have like big boulders. I wanted there to be some sheer cliffs and I thought that this place might be really cool for um, people who are doing a bit more adventurous, uh, adventurous type of things in the national park. God, I sound so adventurous by calling adventurous type of things. People doing rock climbing and bouldering. But I think that uh, this would attract a lot of people who are like, really into that sort of stuff. So, you know, this I wanted this national park to have something for everybody. So there's um, obviously areas of the national park that are just for people who are camping. There's places for people who are doing some hikes. And then there is um, this area here where, um, you know, you pretty much have to have a four wheel drive to get up um, through this dirt road. Though you will see people um, driving all sorts of cars up this road. Uh, but basically, I figured this area would be for people who are pretty much dedicated to coming up for rock climbing or, you know, maybe doing some pretty epic hikes up this ridge. So I decided to place down a couple of these boulders so you can see those people doing, um, doing some bouldering, doing some rock climbing. Um, again, unfortunately, I don't like the colour, you know, it would have been really nice to have cliff, a cliff face that matched the boulders, but, you know, that's just, that's just the way it is. Either way, I do cover quite a bit up with the trees, although I would have really loved this place just to have like a sheer cliff and then, you know, saw people climbing up it. That would have just been ideal rather than having like massive boulders that sit below it. Again, can't really, can't really work um, my magic around that too much. Unless you guys have an idea of a way of, you know, fixing that up a little bit because I would definitely come back and change things just so that it matched it a little bit better. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, now we're going through and just getting a bit of the trees in just to cover up a bit of the things that aren't working and mainly just to um, bring this place alive because I wanted the valleys to be very lush and very green with some bigger trees. Uh, we are bringing up a few of the pine trees up into this mountainside, but we're trying to go for a bit more of smaller trees, um, more foresty sort of areas as we go to some much higher altitude areas. Um, on top of Mar Marble Mountain, I think it'd be pretty high up. Um, maybe it's snow in winter time, who knows. Um, I know that a lot of the mountains within Los Angeles around um, California, a lot of those mountainsides snow um, all year round, which is just completely blows my mind. Um, we barely get snow in winter in Australia. And if you are getting um, like any sort of vibe from the sort of national park I'm going for, you're probably getting maybe like a Yosemite National Park or maybe Kings Canyon um, type of feel from everything that I'm doing. Though I'm not really using any sort of reference photos for this build, um, probably because I, I know those national parks so well. I mean, I've never been to them, but I just know them from a lot of like uh, documentaries I've seen and just even on Google Earth, I've checked them out a fair bit. They're just incredible, especially on Google Earth. But uh, yeah, I'm not really taking anything from inspiration, just sort of building. And I think it's, it's sort of like a mix of my own um, idea, my own um, experiences going to national parks, even in Australia, I guess they're quite similar. 
um, but then also trying to fit in a bit of the redwoods but this isn't really a redwood sort of territory um, I know we do have some really big boulders down closer to the marshlands but again Kings Canyon and um, Yosemite National Park they don't really incorporate any sort of marshland as far as I'm as far as I'm aware uh, so you know it's really kind of its own thing but that was sort of a bit of an idea of where I was going with a bit of the builds so uh, well did I even talk about that river one <laughs> god uh, don't, I'm going to talk way more about this sort of stuff in the live play at the end, but uh, that's, there's another little campsite uh, right next to the river. I think it would be great for kayaking. Most people will probably be down there just for that riverside um, campsite and probably walking along that ridge. I think that would be a nice little location too. Um, I also dragged a couple of um, hiking trails up along the ridges. You'll see them in the live play. They look awesome. Get some amazing views of all of Marble Mountain to be honest. Um, didn't bother looking at the city because I think the frame rate would be pretty tragic from up there <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but uh, I think that would be make for some pretty cool cinematics um, at some point. Maybe we'll do that in this episode. Um, and then I've just done something very sneaky as the main entrance into this whole area. Um, using one of the park, uh, so the park entrances of the national parks and making it into a um, drive through one which I'll talk about talk a bit about how I um, created that in the live play you probably saw a bit of it but yeah it was a bit sneaky it worked I don't know how well it worked but you know it worked that's as best as we can do um, and I also wanted some camping spots above these ridges to see some people hiking and getting around uh, I think this would be one of the main hiking trails of Marble Mountain but we will make some more Especially when we start working on the pine forest, like the redwood forest, and um, some areas around the desert as well, I think we'll make for some really cool hiking trails. Whew, big episode. Let's get into the live play, and I'm going to give you a bit more of a lowdown of all the things that I got up to in the time lapse. Man, oh man, have we made some progress in Marble Mountain. This is such a long episode, I can already feel that it's going to be a real long one. Uh, I've got a few things to show you in this live play, so we're just gonna keep powering through and you know You guys can just appreciate a big long episode uh, I've just finished up a live stream on I did it on Monday I'm Sure a lot of you guys watched it on the Sunday, but yeah, if you've just watched that I'm pretty much just jumping straight into this live play um, to give you a bit of a tour. So let's um, go through some of the areas that we've been building. Now we built this a couple of weeks ago, but I've just finished it off. Basically, uh, the way that this now works is I ended up having to plop down and no complaints because I think it actually adds a lot, but I've had to plop down a couple of different parks up here just so we can start getting some people actually using these tracks. So we've got some people camping, we've got some people visiting one of the log um, cabins and people are actually making the hike through the caves and up into the ridge which is exactly what I wanted. Um, I've made this its own national park um, though like I said well like I'm probably going to say in the time lapse uh, it's all part of the same national park but basically so that we could sort of um, name areas and you know have a bit of a story behind each little spot and so we can actually get people going to different parts of the national park. Uh, I've split it up so this cave system, originally I was just going to have it like this big, but um, I wasn't really getting any many, I wasn't getting very many tourists, uh, mainly because there weren't any parks within the walkways. Now I've dragged it all the way up here so that you get people making the journey from down here and going for a big walk up to this uh, campsite. Um, I plan to extend it a little bit further so we can actually get some people doing some massive walks, but it's just cool seeing people actually making the journey across the ridge and seeing people just walking into that cave is just so fun. It's just so fun. Yeah, it's, I love it. So, uh, the idea behind that is that this would be like a very touristic area of the national park. You know, this is a huge reason why people are leaving the city to come to this spot. Uh, people are also dying here for some reason. Sorry, buddy. Uh, it's not that dangerous, but I reckon some aspects of this cave system would be dangerous. So you'd have some like real low key, easy um, caving uh, adventures in here for the whole family. And then you'd probably have some more advanced stuff. So the people doing the more advanced stuff would probably make the trip up to this campsite here and 
would do some camping. Might need to drag some fences. But um, yeah, I reckon that'd be this whole ridge up here would be full of caves. And that's probably just like one network of it. To get here, people are making the journey um, all the way through the Copper Falls uh, farmlands. We've got some buying down here. And I mean, the road is, it's a little bit steep, but I like that it's steep. But I do want to do it like a dirt road because I want, you know, the average vehicle to actually be able to make its journey down here. Yeah, so cool. So, very foresty. We're, I wanted to keep it um, a bit of a mix of pine trees and like much lower type of foliage. And then, let's get into the next spot. And I think that's a better. Let's do it like that. So, lots of farms, lots of farms, lots of farms. We're going to continue farms around here. But over this side, we're just going to keep it pretty bushy. Um, because that is all the national park. And this is the sort of stuff I'll end up doing. Trains. A couple of people who have built some houses around here which I think would be a really nice spot to, to live except for probably here we probably a little bit annoy, uh, annoying and noisy <laughs> and then we have our second part of the national park which is the falls so camping spot down here there's a little camping spot next to the beach and there's also a bit of um, rock climbing too I reckon some bouldering will be um, pretty popular at this spot people are accessing the national park through here and I love that people are parking along here as well. I think it's pretty cool. If um if you're not really interested in going down to the beach, you've also just got this lookout. So um you know a lot of people I think would probably um on their journey up maybe further on um you know out of this sort of area might stop by and just have a quick pit stop over here. Maybe a little cafe would be cool there too. I don't know. Well, we're gonna work on all this area a little later on. You know, all up here is under detail. We'll get to that another stage. I'm somewhat happy with the falls. I mean, this needs a bit of work and the, I would love some of these rocks poking through, but unfortunately, I mean, water and rocks just don't go well together. They don't play nice. I think that's fine for the time being at least. Now we're going into the main entrance of the national park. This is like the main road in there. Look at all these people traveling in. That is so cool. So going into the national park, we have the main entrance here. I'm relatively happy. It's a bit of a pain how slope that is, how steep that is. But I just love that entrance for the park. I think it needed it. Uh, this would be like a ticket booth where people can actually buy tickets into the national parks. Uh, I know that's a big thing in Australia. I'm sure that's the same everywhere else. Um, I also wanted this area to be a real park. So this is the actual entrance into the whole national park. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. So see how it's like the big uh, expanded out area um, because once again, the way that I like to operate is, you know, it's got to be real, you know, if you're going to be entering through here, you've got to enter into the whole national park. So the entrance for people to walk through is through here, but you know, we're, it's getting a little bit of a, like, let's have a look. Where is that national park? Look, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Surely we're making money. But who cares? Driving through, driving through, driving through. I've put in a couple little spots where people have pulled over. I would imagine there'd be like paths going up to all these different ridges, but I didn't drag them through just because, uh, you know, networks and stuff do some weird things to the landscape. You know, we need to fix that up. But I've done a few uh, of these fences just to mark a little bit of the barrier, adding a little bit of detail as well. Going into the third section of the National Park. Follow this guy. You know what? Let's just follow this guy. So going into this section is more for the adventurous type. People who are interested in rock climbing, people who have probably got four drives rather than these yellow hatchbacks that probably wouldn't be suitable for driving on a road like this, especially with trees growing in the middle of them. Um, you're too slow, my friend. Going up here, we now have the spot where people do rock climbing and um, some way more adventurous types of hikes. I really love this spot. I think it's really fun. Uh, I love that we've got these big campsites. You know, this is like a real, real rock climbing heaven just here. Haven, not heaven. Well, it's supposed to be a bit of a heaven. Uh, we've got the cliff face. I really wish we could get the same colored rocks as my um, as my map theme, but 
you know, for the time being, this is just fine. I always say, I always say for the time being, but let's be honest, it's just going to stay like this. Uh, got some people doing some serious rock climbing. This person's squished in between the rocks, but I'm sure he's having a good time. Fun area, real fun area. We also have, and I don't know if I included this in the time lapse, but we've got this path that goes all the way around here. You can see some people wandering up. This makes its way up to a ridge up here where you get some pretty nice views uh, that would then extend out a little bit further. I've just stopped it in that forest, but imagine that it just keeps on going. We then have a much higher um, area of the track up here. This would be like a two night walk. You know, you wouldn't, this would be for some serious, serious hikers. You would get some very nice views of the greater region of Marble Mountain. I think that is very cool. <laughs> I love that. Log cabins. This is a sort of place where they'd have like very basic facilities. You'd have, um, you know, stove. You'd have some, um, you know, a place for like a wood fire. Uh, what am I looking for? Fireplace and that's about it. Most people probably be camping, but we've got no one camping up here at the moment. Did I do another one? I don't think I did. Yeah, I've just got one down here, but that's it. Yeah, so cool. I don't know about the open fire, but whatever. I was going to do one up here, but I figured it's probably not the best place to camp. It'd be pretty windy. So, we've got a few bits of areas where people are camping up on the main ridge of the National Park. Final location, following up this road. Da, 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 da. We've got this little creek too, which I have to do more of them. That's very, very fun. Little bridge. Mm, need to fix that up. Um, river, river, river. And then coming into our um, last campsite, which is this river. And it's, you know, people come here for kayaking. People come here for some other walks. There's another path going up here um, to this ridge. Uh, but the main campsite is here, which I love that people are actually parking and using. Might have to get a bush out of your expensive car, my friend. But I like this area. I think it's um, a pretty nice little place to um, go for a bit of a kayak, though you'd most probably see rapids at a, a gradient like this. It's pretty steep, but you know, whatever, that's fine. For future future builds, so here's my thinking. Um, oh, did you see that? My mouse is running out of battery. I'm not sure if that's popping up on the screen, but I'm just gonna keep on going. <laughs> What I'm planning on doing is I would like there to be like one more national park, maybe, maybe a small village up here, but we'll see. We are pretty close to the top, to the summit of the physical marble mountain. So I don't want to go to, like, I don't want to build this area up too much. I'm even reluctant with the amount of trees that I'm going for. So I think, honestly, I think the pine forest should stop about here. I might remove a bunch of these trees and just replace them with more of the smaller foliage, like like these ones, rather than going for the big pine trees. Because I think the pine trees are best suited for at the very base of the mountain, rather than closer to the summit. That's what I think, at least. So we will continue planting. We're going to continue spreading out. But, you know, all this will continue detailing at another stage. Um, let me know when you do want to see me do that, if you're interested in this sort of stuff. This is the stuff that I live for in Marble Mountain, to be honest. <laughs> I love doing this sort of work. Um, but look at all this work. I mean, look at all this stuff I've just been building. It's pretty epic. The idea is I would like to extend out these roads, potentially crossing around here for some like crazy mountainous scenic drive, I think would be really cool. And coming down to, um, I think it's Serrano Valley, I believe. Um, I'm going to continue this road too. It's going to come down to this um, this little area down here, which um, again I'm going to have some sort of uh, some sort of very touristic town that's going to sit in this spot. It's going to be really nice, like log log sort of buildings, uh, like some nice bridge. It's going to be very nice. A lot of boats in the water, and then um, yeah, then this road's going to snake up and somehow connect up to this one. And we're gonna get roads going all the way through here and this needs to be detailed and bleh, that's pretty bad at the moment. Far out, what an episode. 
I've really loved putting this one together and if you guys have enjoyed watching it then please let me know in the comments section below or just by rating up the video that helps me out a ton so um thank you for doing that if you have done that or thinking about doing that <laughs> alright guys thank you for tuning in much appreciated and I'll see you in the next episode see you later